So today I'd like to take some time out of my workday to predict the future for you. With the iPhone 6, it's a little bit more prone to having issues with touch than the older iPhones. You lose touch functionality on the screen. You can still see the screen, but when you go to swipe, nothing actually works. As what they do is they deny a problem. They blame the user. They blame the way they use the device. They say they take no accountability. And then once enough people notice that something is wrong, then, and only then, will they release an extended warranty protocol and go, sorry, my bad. So here's what's going to happen with the iPhone 6. People are going to go to Apple stores. Hundreds of thousands of people are going to drive tens of hundreds of thousands of miles to Apple stores to be told, I'm sorry, we don't acknowledge this issue. Yes, I understand that all modern smartphones have underfill under the important ICs, but we don't, and it's not an issue. Sorry, fuck you. But would you like to buy a brand new 6S or an SE? That's what they're going to do. Then enough people are going to get pissed off about this on the internet, and once enough people are pissed off about this, then Apple's going to get a class action lawsuit against them. Then after that, Apple is going to start getting in hot water, and then they will release an extended warranty program. But they're not going to do it unless you start bitching. Now that I've at least partially correctly predicted the future, I'd like to just go over a couple of talking points. The first is the defense that many people use of Apple that simply thinks they are a company that can do no wrong, which is that you're using it wrong. That is the most common defense of Apple products. It's, it's not that you know, you're using the USB-C to HDMI dongle wrong. Why did you buy the one that works with every other laptop? You're supposed to buy the $80 Apple one. You're not supposed to encode video on a 2011 MacBook Pro. Why would you buy a quad-core $2,700 laptop? You're supposed to use it for Facebook. You, you're, why did you buy an iPhone 4 if you planned on holding it with your hand? If you do that, you're not going to get signal. You're using it wrong. That's the common mantra of people who defend them regardless of what's going on. And what people will say with the iPhone 6 is that, oh, you, you, you must be dropping it too much or destroying it. You know, any, but any phone that you try to use in that manner is going to have problems. You're not supposed to do that. Any phone that you use the way that you abuse your iPhone 6 is going to have problems. Except for the fact that those same people use the iPhone original, the iPhone 3G, the iPhone 3GS, the iPhone 4, the iPhone 4 for CDMA, the iPhone 4S, the iPhone 5, the iPhone 5C, the iPhone 5S, the iPhone 6S, the iPhone 6S Plus, the iPhone SE, the iPhone 7, the iPhone 7 Plus. Every single one of those phones has no problem with touch going away after time. They all work fine with the Touch IC. There's no problem with Touch IC on any one of those phones. And they're used by all the same people that use the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus that have rampant Touch IC issues. So that can just be debunked because people did not start just beating their phone with a hammer as soon as they bought the iPhone 6. It's not like everybody collectively said, now that we have iPhone 6s, let's step on them just to see how strong they are. This is the same people that have been using the same iPhones for the last seven years without having a lot of issues, and now they're using this one, and now these issues magically pop up. It's a fault with the phone. Further, if you look at the iPhone 6S, you'll note that they changed the casing in that area. So even though the 6S looks almost identical to the 6, the material used is thicker and also stronger on the part that bends that is right by the Touch IC area, which means that Apple knew that this was a problem. So a lot of people say, they did, this is not a problem at all. Apple didn't know that it was a problem. There was no problem at all. So if there was no problem at all, then why is it that Apple changed the casing in, on the 6S? That shows that they not only was there a problem, but they knew there was a problem. This is just a basic common sense of, you know, p people usually don't wear a cast over an arm that is not broken. They don't put a Band-Aid over a knee that doesn't have a cut. If I put a Band-Aid on my knee, it's because I've cut my knee. It's not because, oh, I just wanted to put a Band-Aid over my knee, you know, just in case. Uh, you don't you don't reinforce in the area of a phone that hundreds of thousands of people say is bending and causing issues unless it is an actual issue. Now let's get over to the second best point, which is that this only goes for the iPhone 6 Plus, not for the iPhone 6. Now the iPhone 6 Plus is more likely to have this problem because it is a larger phone, therefore it is going to be easier to bend and break than the iPhone 6. However, the iPhone 6 is made from the same materials, it uses the same chips in the motherboard, the same soldering process, and it, it's pretty much the same phone, it's just slightly smaller. So there's no reason to not cover the iPhone 6. 
Now, some may say since the iPhone 6 is smaller, it doesn't break, and that would be untrue. There are thousands upon thousands of reports online of people with an iPhone 6, not a 6 Plus, a regular 6, that have the same problem. So here, they are leaving out a large group of people who are having the exact same issue, and I feel that that is wrong. People with an iPhone 6 should be covered under this, as well as people who have a 6 Plus, because it is the same phone with the same design defect, the same flaw, the same casing material, and the same chip on the motherboard. Same design. There's really no reason to cover one group of people and not cover the other group of people. The next issue I have with, with this is that, it, frankly, it, it came too late, as with many Apple warranty programs. The 2011 MacBook Pro that had all of the crashing and GPU issues was not covered until mid-2015. So people who had issues with that machine in late 2012 had to wait until 2015, a full three years later, to get coverage. That's insanity. Most people who use it for professional use are going to move on to a new machine by then. So... You know, you didn't really help them. Most people simply threw the device away. So a lot of people who could have been covered under this program if it were released in time were now not covered under it because they've gone ahead and they've just bought the next generation or they bought the new device, which is probably what Apple wanted them to do anyway. Now, with the iPhone 6, uh, this came out at the end of 2014. We're at the end of 2016. It took years for them to start actually covering this. There were reports dating back to mid-2015 of this being a serious issue. Thousands and thousands and thousands of reports coming from both independent service centers, coming from customers, coming from Genius Bar employees themselves. And it took until the end of 2016 for this to be covered. A lot of people probably just gave up. They threw the device out. They just decided, let's just get a new one. And admittedly, that, that's probably what, what Apple wants. They want you to give up. They want you to just buy a new one. Because once you throw away the old device, once you throw it away or you sell it or you give it to an electronics recycler or you trade it in at the store to buy a refurb, you're, not, you're, you're no longer eligible for this program. So by waiting people out, even though you've released a program, hundreds of thousands of people that would have been eligible are not eligible because they can't take their phone out of the garbage can, they can't go in a time machine and pick up that iPhone 6 that they threw away or gave away to the AT&T store, Best Buy, or traded in somewhere to buy a new one. They can't get that back and give it to Apple. So kudos for on being able to wait out the public that long. The final issue here is that they're charging $149 for the service. So it's one thing to the release a device that has a design flaw that you're fully aware of. It's another to deny that this flaw exists while charging people $350 for a out-of-warranty replacement with another refurbished phone that has the same defect with only a three-month warranty. It's another altogether to wait a year and a half to come out with the program. But the insult injury is when you then say, yes, we released a phone that has a defect. We were charging people regard and giving you back other people's defective phones this entire time. And if you want it fixed now, if you waited a year and a half for us to finally admit that we were wrong, it's $149. Fuck you. Yeah, we're going to charge you the amount to fix the defect in the $600 phone that you bought, the same amount that you could have paid to buy a phone from Motorola that doesn't have this defect at all. Insult to injury, middle finger, punch in the face, kick in the balls. This is just, I mean, this, this is a new one, even by Apple standards, with the iPhone 5 power button. They covered that under an extended warranty for free. With the MacBook Pro 2011 graphics chip issue, they eventually covered that for free. The 2012 Retina issue with the graphics chip, they eventually covered it for free. The Mac Pro with the Fire Pros that were failing, they eventually covered that for free. The 2010 MacBook Pro with the C9560 issue, they eventually covered that for free. It took a long time of denial and a lot of people just throwing out machines that were good, but eventually they did the right thing and they covered it. Here, they eventually covered it for only one of the two phones and it's $149. I mean... I, that, that is just, that is a serious kick in the balls. And that's just, that's kind of lame. So a lot of my prediction was correct, but it wasn't 100% correct because they're only covering it if you will pay the $149 fee, 
which I think is ludicrous, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, for those of you who watch my live streams, you know that I was talking about buying into cell decks and also CXW, now Core Civic, around Halloween right before the election. And those predictions actually worked out the same way as my April prediction on the iPhone 6 Touch IC. So I figure I might as well include one more in a video where I'm joking about predicting the future. So here I'm going to link you to Rail, Freight Car America. It's, uh, I bought about 1,000, 1,000 or 1,500 shares of this right before the election. I think it's, uh, it's a pretty good chance of going up to 20 over the next one to two and a half years. I don't think that there's much risk. There always is risk with the stock market. I don't think there's a lot of risk of it going back down. I do still own a stake in it. And I think it will go pretty well into the future. So as always, I hope you learned something and do leave your opinions and thoughts in the comments below on the iPhone 6, the iPhone 6 Touch IC issue, Apple's $149 repair program, and whether you think I'm an idiot for buying a thousand so shares of Freight Car America. 